Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through verse 20 today. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and to I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Amen. I want to thank you today for another chance to be able to share to you the wonderful news of Jesus Christ and, you know, the call of God. I know each and every one of us that has been born again have a call of God. The Bible teaches us right there in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19. Go ye therefore into all of the world. Praise the Lord. I brought out not too long ago how that all of us really are called to take and to be missionaries. And I'd like to talk to you today about reaching the lost. The lost includes all that have never accepted Jesus Christ and been born again. All of us are called to be witnesses. And as a witness, we must become all things to all men. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, said, To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. We must lay down any and all prejudice that we might have. Also, we must not judge others, lest we be judged. I'm here today to tell you, that the call of God is upon each and every one of us today, and we need to be busy today doing the work of God. God called me many years ago. I remember when he first called me to preach the gospel. I was in Brother Robert Glass's church, and I remember walking up to Brother Glass and telling him exactly, you know, what uh, God had revealed to me. I said, Brother Glass, God has called me to preach. He said, where are you called to preach to, Brother Duke? And I looked at him and I said, I have been called to take and to be a missionary to the British Isles. And from that day on, God began to lay one of the strongest burdens upon my heart to take and to reach the English people in a land that I had taken and been to many times and even taken and married my wife. I had been in the United States Air Force when I met my wife. After we got married, I asked her, had she ever heard of a Pentecostal church? She had never heard of one at that time. Anyway, later on, we took and we worked and we endeavored to take and to make sure that we would able to go over to the British Isles to take this gospel message to her family. As a result, in 1966, me and my wife and kids went over to be with her and her family. And we find that uh, it wasn't very long before her mom and dad, realizing how religious we really were, asked us to leave. We left there. And I remember taking and going out and searching for a place to remain while I was there. And we finally found a bed and breakfast place that we could take and get a room in. And then we took and we began to look around and we found a little hall in the city of Rushton, England. And we rented that hall, and God began to use us to spread this gospel message in that land. Brother and Sister Barker came to the meeting, and God took and touched them and filled them with His Spirit. They began to bring others. We began to knock on doors, and God began to bless us over there. But then sadly, after my visa expired, I had to leave. Anyway, sometimes we had to realize you know that there is a time for everything. There's a time for living and there's a time for dying. But today is the time that we need to lay down all of our creeds and our prejudices and take and realize that we need to take 
and do the work of God that God has called us to do. When we're born again many times, we accept any and all things that are taught to us by our Father in the Lord. Why? Because we receive the apostolic spirit and that is the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to you or to me. It's beyond our, I guess, expectation, our wildest dreams. And so when we receive the experience of the Holy Ghost, that man that brings us to the Lord, we listen to him and we will do anything that he tells us to do. And he will teach us sometimes things that we should do that are right, but then there also can be something that may not be right. And instead of winning people to God, we run people off. I'm here today to tell you sometimes we have to lay down some of the creeds that we have been taught. I remember one man that was real close to me told me that I couldn't drink coffee. Another man told me that I couldn't wear a colored shirt. So I made sure today that I wore a great colored shirt just for you today. But anyway, we find that we need to lay down a lot of our creeds. We need to become all things to all men to reach everyone today. We need to understand that God wants us to take and to reach the laws. And we are the ones that are called to do it. You see, just like we listen to that Father in the Lord and we obey everything that He tells us, sometimes we take and we use the wrong technique. We must understand that our Father in the Lord was right on the new birth found in Acts chapter 2. But we find that He may have had some ideology that was incorrect. And we need to make sure that we are following in the right path and doing exactly what God wants us to do. And we need to be wise in order to win souls to God. Hallelujah. Anyway, we need to think about it today. We find that, uh, you know, that pastor may have liked certain types of music. And he may have downed other types of music. He might have liked the sound system turned up really loud. Loud, loud, louder. <laughs> I remember when I started the work over in Lydney, England. I remember uh, one day I had an American group to come in. And I was running about 45 or 50 people. And, uh, you know, during the service, they turned the uh, uh, speakers up as loud as they could. And the next thing I know, people begin to walk out of the service. And I took and I went outside to ask him what was happening. They took and they covered their ears like that and said, it's just too loud for us. When I started the actual church, my first church in High Wycombe, England, soon after we began to have a congregation, our congregation consisted of some Americans, some West Indians, some Africans, and just a few, just a couple of English people. And uh, I took and I began to realize something is not happening to win the English people into the church. And the uh, way that we conducted our service was, you know, the American way. You know, very lively, very loud, Pentecostal. Thank God for that. I enjoy it. But apparently they didn't. And so I took and I began to speak to God about it. And I prayed about it. And God began to take and give me the understanding that maybe we need to take and to try to have a service that would reach out to the English people. Is there anywhere in the Bible that says you had to take and be loud, loud, loud? I don't believe so. <laughs> Praise God. I believe that we should make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I believe that we need to worship Him with all of our heart, with all of our understanding. I believe that we need to take and love Him. Praise God. But we also need to take and become all things to all men. So I noted that when the English people visited, they were put off with the loudness. So I felt like we needed to have an additional service that was designed to take and to reach the English. You know what Satan did? He loved what I said. He took that suggestion and he used it to create havoc. And it was spread around that I was racist. Well, here I was loving, praise God, people from every nationality, just like the Bible teaches us to do. But Satan took that and he changed it around. 
And he began to spread it through using people that were in the church to take and to tell others that Pastor Duke is racist. Well, as a result, I backed off and I failed to follow through on what God had revealed to me. There's a need today to reach every type and class of people. Here in the USA, there are churches of all types. We find that a lot of our churches today have mixed congregations, and I thank God for that. But there are still some groups that have black congregations. And we find that there are some that are Hispanic congregations. And then we find that there are some of the services that are traditional, others that are contemporary types of services. Then there are the Pentecostals, which I'm sure that most of you really enjoy. But you see, there's some people that are put off by the loudness of a Pentecostal service. And others are put off by other things that we try to force upon them. And it's possible today that we run more people off from the church than we do to bring in to the church. And I want you and I to take it to be soul winners today. Recently, I became aware of a certain church nearby. And I remember passing, you know, that church many years ago. I've just moved back into this area, and I remember many years ago, there was nobody there. It was an old building. Didn't have very many cars parked around it. But when I returned, I noticed they had exploded in growth. And the building, they had built a beautiful, huge building there. And uh, it spread out all over. And I took and I began to realize something has changed here. What has happened? What caused this to occur? And to, I took and I began to, you know, endeavor to find out why this church had had such phenomenal growth. And after I began to do a little research on it, I found out some of the methods that they used. And God then began to speak to me again about taking the same message to the British Isles. Why would I go back to the UK? I've got no... Because God spoke to me about bringing the whole gospel to all types of people in the UK. And we need to be trained today on how to reach all people. If that little quiet church there in Niceville, Florida could explode in growth like they have, why should it not be so for our Pentecostal people? And why can't we become all things to all men which we need to take and to accomplish? The English need the full gospel message again. The Scottish people need the full gospel message again. The Welsh people need the full gospel message again. The immigrants need the full gospel message. The Muslims need the full gospel message. I tell you what, God has been so good to you and me. And if you are born again today, you know what I'm talking about. He has been a great God to us. And I thank Him for allowing me to be able to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. But others need to take and to be able to understand and to hear that it's for them is for their children and all of those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, why am I concerned about Great Britain and the United Kingdom? Because when I went over there the last time, just a few months ago, I noticed that the Muslims are invading that nation and they're set on taking that nation. They're also set on taking the USA. And I want you to know that eventually there will be a vote that will change in the UN and it will take and bring about the acceptance, you know, of sanctions against Israel. And when that's done, we're going to find out that, you know, the UN is going to move against the land of Israel. And before that happens, the rapture is going to take place. I want the United Kingdom, I want England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, to be able to hear and know the full gospel message. They've had it before. 
Brother and Sister Barker, when I met them in Rushton, England in 1966, told me there used to be a preacher there that baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We took and we found other ministers that were over there that believed in Jesus Christ and water baptism in his name. And I remember when we went back over there in 1972 as missionaries, I remember meeting a uh, minister and his wife from the Wycliffe Bible Institute. And I remember talking to them about what we believed. And as I took and I finished talking to them and explained it to them about Jesus Christ and who he really was and baptism in Jesus' name, that missionary man looked at me in the eye and he said, Brother Duke, he said, many, many years ago, there were many people like that here in the British Isles. But he said, today, we're all one. You know what he meant? He meant that we have converted everybody back over to the triune doctrine. What is the triune doctrine? The accepted trinity. It is three people that have to sit on one throne. Hallelujah. What is the apostolic trinity that I wrote about? It's one person that has a trinity within him. Praise the Lord. God is a spirit. And we find that this great spirit took and created a body to dwell in. He created you and I also as a trinity. A body, a soul, and a spirit. We are the trinity, hallelujah, of one person. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And we find that what this Wycliffe missionary was telling me in 1972 was there used to be people in the British Isles that believed just like you believe, but we're all one today. They had gone back to the mark of the beast. And they need to take and have another chance to hear the whole gospel, the great truth of the love of who Jesus Christ is must be unleashed again in the British Isles. They need to know this great revelation that God rolled himself in human flesh to give us the greatest gift of all. You see, the greatest part of you is your spirit. You cannot see it. Did you know that? The greatest part of you is your spirit. You cannot see it. But I'm here today to tell you that your body is going to die. And oh, I want you to know one day at the rapture, if you're a son of God, we're going to be called up to meet Jesus Christ in the air. And I want to rise up on that day. I don't want to wait for the judgment of God. There are two plans of salvation that are put forward today. One of them takes you to the judgment seat of God. I don't want to go there. And I don't believe you want to go there either. But the other one is the way that Jesus told us. Unless a man is born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see and he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And then he told Peter, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of God. And what did Peter do in Acts chapter 2 after being filled with a baptism of the Holy Ghost? The people cried out after his sermon. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hello. Oh, mama hakika la bahandaka shanda bakonda. Come on, worship God with me today. He is great and greatly to be praised. And I thank Him today. Hallelujah. And I want you to be able to join with me in this outreach in about Four months, the end of March, I'm going to be returning to the British Isles to take what God revealed to me on bringing all people to Christ. Hallelujah. And I don't know who will take and, uh, you know, have me to come and be with them. 
If I have to, I'll start another work. <laughs> Praise God. We started around six works over in the British Isles. We started High Wycombe. We started Oxford, England. We started Lydney, Wales. And we started uh, over in Chepstow. We find that uh, we were there for some time. We were there in Newport. We were there in Cardiff, also Wales. And then we started to work near the bases, the Air Force bases of Lake and Heath and Mildon Hall in a little place called Newmarket. And uh, then we went up to Scotland and we started to work up in Scotland. Today, most of the works that we started, and we were running somewhere between, you know, 75 to 100 people in most of those works. Today, most of those works are gone. And we want God to take and to bring those works back into fruition. And I believe you do too. Praise the Lord. And the 1st of November, I'm going to take and I'm going to set up a fundraiser because I want to stay there some few months. Whatever God wants me to do there, I'm going to take and do it. The last time I visited, everything was ordained of God. Even to my overnight stay, hallelujah, uh, King's Cross train station. I had to spend the whole night there. Praise God. Let me, uh, uh, I guess the people that were, you know, homeless and all come around and try to get money out of me and beg from me. And uh, I got stuck there. But anyway, I took and I survived and I found out why God allowed me to take and to remain there. And there are so many things that happened to me on my last trip that were all ordained of God. You follow God. Hallelujah. Follow His way. Well, anyway, on November the 1st, I'm going to begin a fundraiser here on Facebook. I'd like to ask you to help me become a partner in missions with me for this journey back over to the United Kingdom where I'm going to begin to take and to stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to take it to those people again. And whatever it takes, I'm going to do it for Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, if you're here in North uh, Florida or Southern Alabama or Eastern Mississippi uh, near Mobile or anywhere like that, if you'd like for me to come by and visit your church and allow me to sell my books, all the profit from my books is going to be going to this uh, fundraiser for taking and uh, you know paying for the trip that we're going to make over to the British Isles. I'd like to ask you to take and to pray you know, that God will use me. He has spoken to me. He has told me to take and to go back. And I am going to do what God wants me to do. And I know that you would join with me in prayer for that to happen. I'm asking you to take and to support us when the fundraiser uh, appears on this site. God bless you. It's so wonderful being with you again today. I hope and pray that I've said something that will be beneficial. If you want to, you can go to my site, uh, www.actchurch.com, and you can find some of my Bible studies and PowerPoints. Uh, also, I have another website, www.usaneedschurchschools.com, and then I also have World Christian News for You. And you can go there, and you can take, and you can study and read what I believe. I believe in the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I want you to understand it also. Hallelujah. God bless you. Would you join with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone that has listened to this broadcast today. And I pray for those, Lord Jesus, that their hearts would be moved and they would be touched. Oh God, that they would have a desire to help God, in this outreach, God, in the British Isles, Lord, I'll be returning over there around the latter part of uh, March. I'm going to be there some few months at least, maybe more, but according to your will, let it be done. I'm asking you, God, to open doors up, oh, Lord Jesus, for me to take and to be able to walk into that door and carry the full gospel message. Lord, I know several little churches God, that are waiting for me to come. And I pray for them, Lord Jesus, today, God.
I'm asking you, Lord, to touch, God, the pastors of those words. I'm asking you, God, to open up their hearts that they might receive all that you have for them. Lord, there's many of our children over there that were in our works, God, that they have departed from the church for various reasons. And, Lord, I'm asking you, God, to help me to bring them back to thee. Lord, you're coming back to this earth again. Lord, everything is wrapping up right now, Lord. We're getting closer and closer to the rapture of the bride of Christ. And Lord, I want to be ready and I want others to be ready. And I pray, God, that you would use me in a great way. Touch the hearts of those that hear. Oh, God, this message today, Lord, let them, God, open up them hearts. Oh, God, to pray for our going over there and help us. God, in supporting us to make that trip there and to be able to remain there. Lord, we got to do many things. We'll have to rent a place to stay. We'll have to have transportation. Lord, we'll have to find, Lord Jesus, means to take and to support us, oh God, in every way. And I don't have a church, Lord Jesus, to send me today. Oh God, but you have a people. I know that you're able to take and to reach and you're able to touch them and touch their hearts. Do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I know that you will bless them for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you today. I love you. Hallelujah. Love Jesus Christ, would you? He is great today. God bless you. Have a great, you know, remainder of Sunday. And if you haven't gone to church tonight, I pray that you'll have a great service. In Jesus' name.